Brian. Uh, how about that? These two uh, men played many and many a battle. Brian Mullins on the right, of course. Jack O'Shea on the left. Jack was telling me last year they met for the first time in quite a number of years and had a right old banter. A lot of great old tales being told. And what about the tie that Tishik is wearing today? Unashamedly uh, wearing his colours, and why not? His father, of course, Henry Kenny, was a member of the 1936 team that won the All-Ireland for the first time ever. And James Mor Moran hoping here that he will be managing the latest Mayo winners. Outsiders in the minds of the bookmakers. But uh, they have their plans. Meanwhile, Jim McGuinness has one final word with his team. And what a journey they have made to get this far. And it's been a plan that Jim has had the whole time. The target being to be here in September in front of a packed house at uh, Croke Park. 82,000 capacity here. It has been very cold, it's been blustery, it's been windy as well. But the sun is making an attempt now to come out here as the players will be heading across very shortly now to meet the president part of the ceremonial that takes place before the major match here in September and every available space at Croke Park has been well and truly filled here the perfect setting of course quite unique always on All-Ireland final day and amid the pageantry the fact that all of the fans are able to mingle and have fun, have the banter and have the crack roaring their encouragement and uh, cheering on maybe a, a neighbour, a pal, a friend, somebody who was at school with them perhaps playing in the biggest match of the year on the biggest afternoon of their lives and it'll be Mayo who'll be coming across here on the left, on the right hand side of the picture very very shortly and all, of course, getting ready amid all the tension and the nerves and the concern that on this biggest day ever, they will be able to play their best game ever. Donegal, the favourites. Mayo coming in with their own hopes and their ambitions. Donegal going for just a second ever All-Ireland victory. And, of course, many, many links between Donegal and uh, Mayo. We saw Paul Dirk and there is Dad. John is from Foxford in County Mayo. We uh, met uh, Mick Murphy last night on Up for the Match, of course. Son, father of Michael, the captain of Donegal. And now President Higgins coming out here to take the presidential salute. So this is the piece of music now that has been composed by Ronan O'Rahilly, director of music at our Tain Band, for President Higgins as he comes first of all to meet Danny Gall and their captain Michael Murphy from Glen Swilly. His sixth year playing in the championship and he's only 23 years of age and then going through Paul Durkin and so on. It's a team of very strong characters of course who've adapted to the management promptings of Jim McGuinness and believed that an All-Ireland win was possible. Arsenal have won two very tough Ulster Championships this year and last, starting at the preliminary round in each case. Rory Cavanagh there, one of the stars. There's Mark McHugh going up along, Ryan Bradley. And then it's Paddy McFrearty, Colin McFadden, one of those candidates, I'm sure, for Player of the Year. Then the referee is Morris Deegan from Stradbally in County Leash. His lines winner David Coldry from Meath. Eddie Kinsella, another leash man, and the sideline official Connor Lane of Cork. And the umpires on duty Kevin O'Brien, Sean Langston, Alan Abbey, and Richard Oxley. So a big day for them as well. And now the turn of the Mayo captain, whose goalkeeper David Clark, in the absence of the injured Andy Moran, 
it shows the uh, strength of positive willpower and depth of the squad here that they've got on with their business may of winning matches and not feeling sorry for themselves about the, the absence of their captain like Donegal they've provincial championships won in the last two years under the astute management of James Horan there's Aidan O'Shea about whom there is a little bit of a concern Kevin McLaughlin Jason Doherty there, the Marischool there, Alan Dillon has been second leading scorer, end of Varley, got the number 13 shirt, there's Killian O'Connor, one of champions, number 14, the final, finally Michael Conroy, who played in this final back in 2004, came also sub that day and scored a goal. The introduction saw a complete, the special guests here now can go and watch the first ever Donegal Mayo All-Ireland Senior Football Final unfold. Is it to be Donegal's second ever success? Or will Mayo bridge a gap of 61 years and in the process banish the memory of five final defeats in the last 23 years? Time will tell. And we saw with the President of Ireland there, of course, the President of the GEA, Liam O'Neill, accompanying him out. And uh, this, it has to be said, a very difficult weekend for Liam O'Neill and the O'Neill family. Uh, with the death of Liam's sister Barbara at the weekend. She died yesterday morning after an illness and of course we send our sympathies to the O'Neill family. It was Barbara's wishes that uh, the President would fulfil his duties here at Croke Park today. So then Colin Burke, we're about five minutes away from the throw-in of the 2012 All-Ireland Final. Your thoughts on this one? Well I think we're going to see two teams who are similar in style. I think when Donegal played Kerry or played Cork, they, they faced teams who are trying to do things a bit different. Uh, Mayo are almost a carbon copy of Donegal but they're probably not as advanced in, their, in the way that they played the game and it is very difficult for me to see the Mayo forwards kicking some of the brilliant points that they scored against Dublin uh, that day they scored 10 points the first half I can't see that happening today Donegal have got progressively better as the season has gone on they've become much more adventurous and I think for me, Donegal just have more power and I think eventually I'm going to smother Mayo. You know, they will tell you, Pat, in Mayo that all the things that have happened in the last few years, 2004, 2006, the All-Ireland defeats, 1996 and 97, of course, that it doesn't matter, this is a different team. But if things start to go against you in the early part of the game, is there any fear this no, is starting I, I to your I mind? I disagree with you, Michael. I think this, this present Mayo bunch of players are a different bunch of animals, both mentally and physically. I don't think they will suffer meltdown. I think today's game will be a close game. And normally I'd have a preference for one team to win over the other. I, I don't mind who wins. Yeah, I really yeah. wouldn't begrudge any sure. of the two counties all out in success. But I have a slight fancy and a sneaky suspicion that Donegal will win, based on a couple of grounds. One, I think they're more battle-hardened and have beaten better quality opposition on route to the final. I think in terms of evolution as a team, I think they're a year ahead of Mayo. That's number two. I think they play at a greater intensity and work great than Mayo. Number four, I would agree with Colin. I don't think the Mayo forwards are as good as they looked against, against me. I don't think they will have a, a field day in shooting today. And I look back to the league, league match that they played against Mayo and Donegal this year. Donegal were behind and had 14 men. They put Michael Murphy in full forward and he changed the game. They won by seven points. I think there's a big game in Michael Murphy and I think Donegal will win. Battle hardened are Donegal, but then I suppose in racing for Lance's column would agree, uh, Mayo likely raced. Well, there's always a possibility that we're reading too much into Mayo's performance against Dublin. I mean, after all, it is true that they panicked in the last 20 minutes and Dublin outscored them at one point during that by eight mm. points to nil. Something that would never happen to Donegal, who are implacable and never panic. I think that. Mayo were very negative defensively and very mean. They will disrupt and stop Donegal, unlike Cork and Kerry, who to a large extent allowed Donegal to dictate terms and play their own game. Mayo will not allow that. The question then becomes, whose defensive system is better? I think that Donegal's system remains virginal in the sense that it's never been penetrated. They've got great composure. They're implacable. They haven't panicked to date in two years. Even though the Dubs beat them last year, they only managed eight points. And I think that Michael Murphy is bound to sooner or later live up to his great billing, you know, something that we've anticipated for years. On the basis that Donegal will not panic and maintain their icy focus, and on the basis that the referee will do his job properly today, I think that Donegal will win the game. All right, a fantastic atmosphere, obviously, for today's final. So just for a resume, gentlemen, in one word, Joe, it's Donegal. Yes. Pat, it's Donegal. And Colm, it is. For the first time, I'm agreeing with my two <laughs> colleagues here. colleagues. You may get it right. The, <laughs> the All Ireland Football <laughs> Final of 2012 is just moments away. Commentary on the big match is from Jer Canning and Martin Carney.
Thanks, Michael. Well, it hasn't been a great month for favourites, you know. Cork were expected to beat Donegal, Dublin were fancy to beat Mayo, and Kilkenny were tipped to beat Galway in the hurling All-Ireland. They may yet do so, we'll find out next Sunday. Against that background, Mayo will still fancy their chances. Very few envisaged the Donegal Mayo final anyway. Martin Carney alongside me, some atmosphere. Wonderful atmosphere indeed, Jerry. You know, a novel pairing, and you know, just watching the game and uh, you know, as it will unfold, it'll be fascinating to see the influence that Aidan O'Shea and Barry Moran can exert in proceedings. I think Mayo are playing with the wind, which is blowing down into the hill end. It looks like that, and Mayo need to build up a fair lead by half time. Now that will go against the grain because in every game that. Uh, Donegal have played this year they have been ahead at half time with the exception of the Tyrone game so it's incumbent on Mayo to go into half time with a lead if they want to come out and win this game at the end well it certainly is a fascinating prospect and before the match gets underway now, there's going to be a moment's silence and today we remember Barbara O'Neill, you heard Michael mention a moment ago there, she is the sister of the GA president, Liam O'Neill, who very sadly died yesterday. And then Brian O'Maguire, of course, the 24-year-old from Fermanagh, who died in uh, that terrible accident last uh, weekend. Andrew Duffy, another 24-year-old who died tragically after Donegal's semi-final win over Cork, and he was a member of the Termon Club. Sean O'Mahony, a great Pats man, very well known and uh, loved in Dublin GA circles, and also for the Sean Dirk and former county chairman in Mayo and let me include as well in this Nevin Spence his father Noel and his brother Graham a yes love day gorev anonym luka usul Thank you. 